Hey guys, today's video lecture topic is going to be histology. And histology is the study of the microscopic structure of tissues. That word part histo, remember, means tissues. Sometimes you'll hear this called microscopic anatomy or microanatomy. It's all the same thing, the study of tissues. Histology is not the easiest thing we're gonna learn this year, but it is probably the most critical. So this topic is something that will really give you a foundational understanding of the human body. So we're going to start by looking at this concept map here. You should be filling this in as you watch this video. So every time something pops up on this screen, make sure you're putting it on your notes organizer. So let's just start with right in the middle, the study of tissues histology. So let's back up a little bit and redefine what we're talking about when we say the study of tissues. What is a tissue? Remember, we go from the molecular level to the cellular level and then all the way up to the full human body. So after cells, comes tissues. So the definition of tissues are similar cells working together in functionally related groups. So similar cells working together to perform some common function. How do they do that? How do these cells do that? Through attachment, like physically touching each other, and through communication. And we're going to look at the different types of tissues and how that is accomplished. There are four primary tissue types. We have epithelial tissue, we have muscle tissue, nervous tissue and connective tissue. And then within these four major groups, we have a lot of different subtypes of tissues. And you're gonna need to know the characteristics of all of them, so make sure your notes today are really good. Keep your concept map nice and clean, and then keep all your detailed notes on the back with the, with the graphic organizer that has the four major um, primary tissue types. Okay, so go ahead and throw those in your concept map, nervous tissue, epithelial tissue, muscle tissue, and connective tissue, right where they go. So let's start with epithelial tissue. Remember, epi means on. That word part means like on top of or upon. So if we were to assign just a single word to epithelial tissue, we would call it our covering tissue because it really covers a lot of your organs, a lot of those hollow organs. Um, it forms your glands. It's a really important tissue to keep everything in your body sort of compartmentalized, separate from one another. So the functions of epithelial tissue are protection, secretion, absorption, and then forming those barriers between structures in your body. Epithelial tissue is structured in a certain way. Um, first of all, the cells in epithelial tissue, and this is different than on some of your other cells, are very close in contact. They are touching one another. Epithelial tissue is what we call avascular. That means it does not have its own blood supply. Its blood supply comes from the connective tissue that it is attached to that is vascularized. But epithelial tissue itself is not innervated, or sorry, it's not um, embedded with with blood vessels, okay? It is, however, innervated, meaning that there are nerves running through it. It is highly mitotic, meaning it is easily capable of regeneration. They are cheap cells that can be easily replaced. There is a bottom and a top to an epithelial cell. So we call it like a polar cell because there's kind of a, a basement. And then there is a top that is usually um, modified for wherever it is in the body. Okay, so that bottom surface where it's attached to the connective tissue, that is called the basal surface or the basal region. Okay, the top up here that is typically modified for whatever location in the body it is, is called the apical surface. The basement membrane, which is right here, these two layers, um, is what attaches to the connective tissue. And the apical surface, like I said, is modified for function. So this one has microvilli, which are great for um, absorbing nutrients and things like that. Okay, epithelial is tissue is classified by shape and by layers. So we're gonna go ahead and put that in our bubbles here and we're gonna talk about each of those. There are three shapes to epithelial tissue. We have squamous tissue, we have cuboidal epithelial tissue, and we have columnar. And so squamous means flat, cuboidal means kind of like a cube, and columnar means kind of stretched out. Okay, epithelial tissue is also classified by the number of layers. We call it simple, meaning that it has just a single layer of cells. We call it stratified, meaning it has um, stratified layers of cells. Then you've got pseudostratified, which is like kind of not all parallel, kind of um, funky, not all uniform looking. And then you have transitional, which is a certain type of epithelial tissue that's, that's really good for stretching. 
So then when you're naming epithelial tissue, you put those two things together. You call it by the layer, like how many of the cells there are, and then also by the shape. So you can have simple squamous, you can have simple cuboidal, that means just a layer of cuboidal epithelial cells, simple columnar. Or you can have stratified squamous or stratified cuboidal. Then you can have pseudo stratified, which is this here, and then transitional is a certain type of stratified, but they're not in like uniform shapes. They kind of um, get flatter as they go up towards the apical surface, which is why they're really good for stretching. You find those in your, in your bladder, which we need to stretch constantly, right? All right, so that was epithelial tissue. Let's move on to our next major group of tissue, which is muscul muscular tissue or muscle tissue. Muscle tissue is really unique because it is able to contract, which is great. We need our muscles to be able to do that in order to move. Okay, we have elongated cells in muscle tissue that we call muscle fibers. So just know if you hear me say the phrase muscle fibers, I'm talking about muscle cells. And if we were to assign a single word to the function of muscle tissue, we would say muscle tissue is needed for movement. The different types of muscle tissues are skeletal muscle, cardiac muscle, and smooth muscles. Now we're gonna talk about each of those. Go ahead and put those in your uh, little bubbles of your concept map here. Okay, so let's start with skeletal muscle. This is what we call a voluntary tissue type, meaning in order for it to be stimulated, you have to stimulate it. You have to think about stimulating skeletal muscle in order to get them to pull on the bones or pull on the skin and move and create movement, right? Um, the tissue itself is defined by striations, these little what look like pinstripes here on the muscle fibers, on the elongated muscle cells. And what's interesting about them is that they are multinucleate, meaning per each cell, there can be many nuclei. Okay, and obviously the skeletal muscle, that's what you think of when you typically think of a muscle, you think of skeletal muscle. Then we have cardiac muscle. This is only found in the heart, only in the heart. So we need cardiac muscle to be able to be stimulated sort of on its own, right? Which is what it does. You don't need to think about your heart pumping. So this is an involuntary muscle tissue, meaning you don't have to stimulate it through thought. Okay, now its features is that it is also striated. So it has those stripes. And we'll talk about when we get to, to the muscular system, why we have these striations. But there are striations, but it doesn't run like perfectly parallel like skeletal muscle does. It kind of merges and converges. So there's a lot of branching. And then in between the cells, there are what we call these intercalated discs. You can see those dark regions here. And then uh, cardiac muscle is different from skeletal muscle because it is uninucleate. There is only one nuclei per cell typically. Okay, then we have our last muscle tissue type, which is smooth muscle. This is also involuntary because it's found in the walls of your hollow organs, and we don't need to think about um, muscles and vessels contracting so that they can move materials through them. Okay, now the unique thing about uh, smooth muscle tissue is that there are no striations. The elongated cells taper at the end, so we call them spindle-shaped, and they typically also are uninucleate. They have a single nucleus. Okay, moving on to our next tissue type. We have nervous tissue. So nervous tissue is found in the nervous system. So we have our central nervous system, our brain and our spinal cord, and then we have all of our nerves of our peripheral nervous system. If we were to assign a word to describe the function of nervous tissue, we would probably say control or communication, right? So we have sensory reception, receiving stimuli, and also the conduction of impulses so we can control and communicate in the body. So there are two types of nervous tissue, so you can go ahead and throw those in the bubble of your concept map here, neurons and neuroglial or, or glial cells. So let's talk about those for a second. Neurons are the specialized cells of the nervous system. Neurons are really what the nervous system is all about. Glial cells are there to support the neurons. So when you hear people say nerve cells, they're, they're talking about neurons, okay? This structure right here, what you typically think of when you think of a, of an, of a nerve cell. Um, they are amitotic, meaning they don't regenerate or their life cycle is so long that they don't regenerate in your lifetime, which is why it's really important not to kill off those brain cells, right? Because they're not gonna regenerate and be replaced. Their job is to coordinate, regulate, and integrate body functions. These are the important guys. All the glial cells are there to support the neurons. They're like the neurons pit crew, okay? So they support the neurons, they bind them to, to vessels, they connect them to vessels, um, they bind them to each other. These can divide. So when someone has 
brain cancer, it's typically because of a glial cell because these are able to divide. Okay, then we have our big kahuna, which is connective tissue. Now, connective tissue is kind of where everything else goes because it doesn't really fit in our other three categories. So it's very diverse. This is the most abundant tissue type in your body. And really, connective tissue is more about the stuff that's not the cells. So the cells are important, but it's really the extracellular matrix, the stuff outside of the cells that defines the type of connective tissue. So we have um, outside of the cells, we have what's called ground substance, which is just sort of all that um, like liquid nutrients that's found in the connective tissue. And then the fibers are unique to each tissue type. Okay. If we were to say just one word to describe the function of connective tissue, we would probably say support because connective tissue is so diverse and so abundant that it does many things to support all of the functions in your body. So connective tissue binds structures, supports, protects, provides frameworks for the body, fills spaces, stores fats, um, provides insulation, protects against infection, repairs tissue damage, and even more than that. So there are four subcategories of connective tissue and each of those have different types. So we have connective tissue proper, cartilage, bone, and blood. So go ahead and fill those in on your concept map here. And then we're gonna quickly talk about each of these. So connective tissue proper is really all about what is in the fibrous extracellular matrix. What fibers do they have and how are they arranged? And then depending on that, we have different types of connective tissue proper. So if the fibers are really dense, they could be dense regular, they could be dense irregular, or they could be dense elastic, depending on how what kind of fibers you have and how they are arranged. And we'll talk about these more specifically when we talk about connective tissue. The fibers could be loosely arranged. That could be areolar tissue, that could be reticular tissue, or that could be adipose tissue. Then we have cartilage tissue. Cartilage tissue is a rigid type of connective tissue. It's almost as rigid as bone, but not quite, right? Um, it provides support, it provides um, attachments, it protects the underlying tissues, and the unique characteristics of the cells, chondrocytes, remember that word con means cartilage, the chondrocytes, they're protected in these little structures called lacuna, which are almost like these little pockets that they stay in. They do not, cartilage does not have a direct blood supply. It's gonna depend on the tissues around it. And then there are different types of cartilage. You have hyaline cartilage, which is in this picture here. You have elastic cartilage, which is down here. Then you have fibrocartilage here, and all of those are found in different parts of the body, which again, we'll talk about more when we get into the details of connective tissue. Well, this is all just big picture, which seems kind of crazy. Okay, then we have bone tissue. Bone is a connective tissue. Um, bone, is, bone tissue is also called osseous tissue. So the cells of bone tissue are osteocytes. This obviously is a very rigid tissue. Um, it is uh, embedded with calcium and calcium is a hardened mineral. So that's why your bone is so rigid. It provides support, it provides protection. It provides places for muscles to attach. It forms your blood cells. Did you know that? The bone marrow. It stores and releases inorganic chemicals. It's a great way for your body to store calcium when you have too much of it and to let, let it go when you don't have enough. And this is a very active tissue, which means that it heals rapidly. And there are two types of bone tissue. You have compact bone, which are seen in these concentric circles that we call osteons. And then you have spongy bone, which looks a little less regular here. Okay, then we have blood tissue. Um, blood tissue is a connective tissue, okay? It has different types of cells that are working together to form a common function, move nutrients and um, gases around the body. Okay, so we have red blood cells, which we call erythrocytes, these little pink circles here that are so abundant. Then we have white blood cells, which are called leukocytes, which are these larger cells here. Then we have platelets, which are these tiny little dots, which are needed for like clotting in the blood. Then we have plasma, which is kind of all the stuff in between, mostly water. And then we have transport materials such as electrolytes and nutrients and things like that. Okay, so I know that seems crazy, but that was all just big picture stuff. So pause, stop, rewatch as many times as you need to in order to get that information because then we're gonna break it down and get even more detailed for the different tissue types. All right, that's all I have for you today. So I hope you're having a great day.